Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Dania and as you can see from the title of this video, I'll be doing more of like a part two of a video I posted a few weeks ago where I listed six schools that offer cybersecurity here in Canada. If you guys have not yet checked that video out, go ahead and click the link up here to do so. Ever since I posted that video, I've been getting a ton of queries for me to talk about the program that I'm enrolled in, and today I decided to do that for you guys. So a bit of disclaimer, I'm not being paid by the institution to do this. Whatever information I share will be my own experience. I'll not be fluffing anything up, and I'll just say it as it is. If you guys would like more information about the program and the school itself, I'll go ahead and leave a link down below in the description section where you can reach out to the school directly because they are very responsive. So if there's something that I'm saying that you're not quite understanding, it is best if you reach out and speak to the school directly, or you can always shoot me a comment down below. I'll try my best to help you guys as best as I can. So I'll be breaking this video up in two parts. So the first part of this video, I'll be going a little bit in detail about the program and what is expected of you as a student. And closer to the end of this video, I'll be doing a little Q&A because as I mentioned earlier, I got a ton of queries asking me to talk a little bit about the program in terms of expectations versus reality. And I will be doing that for you guys today. So without further ado, let's jump right into the video. The name of the institution that I'll be talking about today is called Concordia University of Edmonton and it's located in the province of Alberta and the name of the program is called a Master of Information System Security Management, otherwise known as the MISIM program. The MISIM program is a two-year 60 credits course which includes 13 mandatory courses, three courses from which you have to choose one, and two nine credits research courses. The program is structured in a way that prepares students to sit one of the most sorted after cybersecurity professional certifications known as the Certified Information Systems Security Professional, otherwise called CIA SSB, which has eight domains. So throughout the course of the program, we are trained on those eight domains. And I'll break down the program a little bit for you. I'll leave the link for the school's website down in the description section below. You can always check it out. And while you're at it, guys, go ahead and smash the thumbs up button. And if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, please go ahead and do so. The first course that I'll be talking about is called Research Method, RRM. So remember when I said that there are two nine credits research courses? There are actually three, but one of those research courses are three credits and it's called RM1. So there is RM1, RM2, and RM3. In Research Method 1 or RM1, you basically select a topic and based on that topic, you're going to find related papers to that topic. You're going to summarize those papers and it's called a literature review. In Research Method 2 and 3, coming fall 20, fall 2020, I know that it has, it's no longer going to be research-based, but project-based. And the reason for the change is that the student-professor ratio is way off. So instead of a professor supervising individual students, it's going to be project group-based. So you're probably looking at maybe eight or nine students per group working on a particular project. I do know that the structure of the research courses are, it's going to be the same in terms of you either pass or fail. There is no in-between. There is no A minus or A plus or B minus. It's pass or fail. So you really have to put your back into those research papers or project-based work. The next course that I'll be touching a little bit on is called TCP IP Security. And in this course, you're going to learn all about the ISO OSI model. You're going to learn about the different attacks that can take place at each of the different layers. You're going to perform those attacks. You're going to also perform mitigation techniques for those attacks. Throughout the course of the semester, you're going to do mini projects and there's a final project and a final exam for this course. So the next course that I'll be touching a little bit on is called Securing an E-Commerce Infrastructure. Throughout the course of this semester, I remember we had to work on mini projects. What one stood out to me the most, and it's the one that we had to create like an e-commerce website, something similar to Amazon, and we had to implement techniques from the OWASP top 10 documentation that guards against common web vulnerabilities. And there's also a final exam for this course. So the next course is called Advanced Network Security. 
So throughout the course of the semester, remember we worked on many projects. We had to create an environment conducive to network monitoring. We played around with a few intrusion detection systems and we had a final project for this course and we also had a final exam. The next course, which is also one of my favorite, is called Firewall Fundamentals, where we learned how to write firewall rules and throughout the course of the semester, we had many projects that we had to work on. And those mini projects helped us to work on our final huge project where we had to basically set up and configure an entire network that has like different zones. And there's also a final exam for this course. The final course is called Governance, Risk and Control. So in this course, you'll basically learn how to perform risk analysis, risk assessment. You learn how to prioritize assets within a company based on that company's risk appetite. There are many projects throughout the course of this uh, class, and there's also a final exam. There are more courses offered in the program, such as cryptography, disaster recovery and planning, and much more. There is a link in the description. You can always check it out for more details. All right, guys, so let's go into some quick Q&A. So the first question I got was, did you consider the rank of the university and what kind of difference does the rank make? To be honest, no. I did not consider the rank. I was mostly concerned about the cost of the program and what the program has to offer. And as I mentioned earlier, this program prepares you to sit the most coveted cybersecurity certification, which is the CISSP. And I liked how the program was structured. I am by no means knocking a high ranking institution, but I personally believe that if you go in a program, whether it be a high ranking institution or a not so high ranking institution with a mentality and that mind frame that you're not going to be mediocre, then you can come out on top just as any other student from any other university. So no, I, I did not really consider that. What are the other universities you considered and what made you choose this one? So I applied to two other universities. I applied to Memorial University of Newfoundland and I also applied to the University of New Brunswick. I chose Concordia because I liked the program, I liked the structure, the courses that were offered. At the time it was the only master's degree that was offering the program and the courses that I was looking for. It basically prepares you to sit the cybersecurity certification and so I just decided to choose this one. So, What are the things you like and dislike about the program? Okay, when I first started Concordia, I liked the fact that most of my classes were small. There were not that many students in any of my classes back then at any given time. And I just felt that the lecturers were able to pour into you more because there were not that many students asking, you know, a lot of questions. No, our classes were so huge. You are looking at maybe 40, 30, 40 students. And just imagine your lecturer answering half of those students' questions. By the time you finish answers all those questions, the class is finished. So I like the intimacy, you know, back then. And I remember back when I was doing my TCP IP security class, our, class were, our classes were so small. We didn't have to worry about not having enough machines or systems to work on, physical machines to, you know, do our practical or, or um, final exams um, on. No, because the classes are so huge, the lecturers have now moved to administering assignments and practicals on virtual machines so i i don't really like that but it's it's okay i mean it doesn't take away from the program itself but i appreciate the fact that i got the opportunity to work on physical machines I also like that our teachers, our lecturers have this really great open door policy. If they say they're going to be in their office from three to five, expect them to be there. You can go in and you can talk to them. They can help you. They can suggest things to you. They can guide you. You know, I, I spoke to a few students from other um, universities in the province and all of those students have the same complaints. Their lecturers they're not always available and because there's so many students in their class you don't have the opportunity to speak with your professor one-on-one -on -one because everybody wants to speak with the professor so i like that our professors make themselves available so the next question is what is the student community like that's a good question 
Um, so it's close knit. It's a close knit community. Even though 95% of the students in our department are Indians, 4.99 are African and I think there is a girl from Sri Lanka. I'm trying to remember and then there's me. I'm from Jamaica. I'm the only Jamaican. So even though you have so many students from different backgrounds and different cultures, we're still a tight knit community. If there's a project that you know you don't understand, you can always speak with your GAs or other students. If there is an assignment that you don't understand, you can always speak with your GA or another student. So, and I appreciate that because you know moving to a new country and doing uh, you know pursuing academia, you need that support. You need you need that community who you can depend on and lean on and ask questions to help you to guide you so i can honestly say that the community there the student community there in my department are like really close knit. so are you happy with your professors yeah i am i'm i am happy with my professors i think my professors are professional and they're they're knowledgeable you know they they treat you with respect because no one wants to go somewhere where the lecturers don't have time for you and they're disrespectful or they're not professionals. But I can honestly say that every single one of my professors that I've come in contact with are professionals and they're knowledgeable and very, very helpful. So yeah, I like my professors. So my final question is, what will the actual job after a postgraduate diploma or master's in cybersecurity be? Now, I already plan on releasing a video as it relates to cybersecurity jobs here in Alberta. I'll be releasing that video in the coming weeks. So if you have not yet subscribed to my channel, go ahead and do so. If you have not yet turned on notification, go ahead and do so. And if you have not yet liked this video, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I truly appreciate you. And I will see you guys next time on my next video. Bye, everybody.